this one exercise in three minutes. Easier it will be to sketch, it'll get proportions right. Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Lily. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're looking for a way to noticeably improve your art within just like one short 20 minute video, this is it. Today we're gonna talk about my favorite exercise for improving my drawing, which is gesture drawing. Because it's quick, it will show you noticeable results, and the number three, that it's so versatile. You can use it to draw anything. Basically, the goal of it is just to capture the essence of your subject, which for me is usually animals, in a really short amount of time. This causes your brain to really just have to synthesize and digest what it's seeing. Just get it down on paper. In this video, we're doing mountain goats. It really just makes you focus on like what it means to actually represent a mountain goat without getting bogged down in the details. It's like, what is the silhouette that will convey to someone in like, you know, the minimum amount of detail what it is that you're drawing. So today we're gonna draw mountain goats and we're gonna do kind of two parts of exercises. I have six reference photos which are linked below in the description or I'll put them up on the screen. We're gonna draw each of them either first in 30 seconds and then again in two minutes. It's quick, you can go through six references in three minutes and that's just gonna, being able to go through and see and draw that much is just gonna do wilds for improving your art. And the main way that it's going to be such noticeable improvement is like you will see between references that your eyes are picking out things faster, you're capturing it better than the one before. And then after we do the two minute one, you're going to be able to look back and see how much more you're able to capture and how accurately you're able to capture an animal in just two minutes. And it, it's fun, and it's every time you start with a new species, which is how it's so versatile, uh, is this one exercise, it's just making, it's honing your eye-hand coordination, it's making you just focus on getting the details in, and it's bringing it all together, and the more and more you do this, the easier it will be to sketch, it'll be easier to get proportions right, it'll make everything easier too. So before I keep talking too long, I guess let's, we can get started. What I'll do is I'll, I'll put up a video, you can follow along, and after the first set, after the set of the six references doing 30 seconds, I'll, I'll kind of break down like how I approach it, so I don't want to do it first because I want you to be able to find what works for you, not what works for me or anyone else. It's whatever your brain kind of naturally defaults to, that might be the easiest way for your brain to like process shapes and everything. So you try to see what kind of like comes naturally to you, just the goal of setting the timer 30 seconds, getting as much of the image in as you can, spending most of the time looking at the reference probably, and then at the end I'll kind of like rehash my strategies and if you want you can go back and re redo that, add to yours, or um, move on to the two minutes. Hi, I just had to move because the sun was starting to go down and I couldn't see anything and it's starting to get, oh anyways, well we'll see you on the other side once we have our six sketches done.
So now that we have done the first run through with all six references, what I kind of wanted to like share like what I find useful for doing these. I really like starting with more like geometric shapes rather than like soft lines. Like the more I feel like the boxier you can do things, it's it's just more simple shapes. So it's easier for you to lump it in without getting too small. Like because usually you can capture like an animal in three shapes like the head kind of like the neck if you want and then the body whereas if you're trying to do too small of shapes then you you know you're spending too long trying to like identify those and then also you just don't have that time to like proportion out too many small shapes so if you're looking for like the really big just rectangles it's easy to pick out and then you can quickly go in and like maybe like add like finer variations for things like you know like oh a shoulder or like a little like divot or like a like an eyebrow you can go back in and add those shapes or like curve out heads or like the ends of noses things like that my first thing is i usually start with uh, so a fairly rectangular shape for the head and then or like for the overall body shape depending on what type of position it is and from there I kind of try to connect it if I had like a head and a body I'm trying to put some sort of neck in and then I kind of put in the most defining facial features whether it's the ear sometimes or like often here in these mountain goats it was the horn for me and then fill in dark areas like the eye and usually the noses because that will just really help pull your eye across and then if I have time, put in some sort of texture for fur. That's about all you have time for here. But in this next one, we're gonna do, we're gonna have two minutes and we're gonna go back over on these references. And I start with the same general, just blocking same rectangles. And then, but then from there, you can go in and add details with still only two minutes, which isn't that much time, but you'll be amazed with how much you can go through. So uh, comment below if you noticed within just these 30 second references if as you were going you were able to pick out things faster if you were starting to get a sense for how mountain goats are put together I don't, I don't know another, a better way to say that but like for me I started noticing like for eye placement and that it was like usually directly below one of the horns because in the one of the first I was really I wasn't quite getting the eye in the right place and I was like internalizing that and then the next one I was like oh well that wasn't quite right it was like we'll try base it off of something else I noticed that one improved a lot and also the the noses started becoming very familiar with like the kind of like loopy nostril that they have um, and it was those stuck out and then I had a lot of fun putting in the chin hair so as it was going I kind of was starting to pick that up more and accentuate it just because I liked how they look. First one I was in a little bit of shock 30 seconds went by really fast so I kind of that first one kind of jump started me to be like oh I gotta go fast and then the other ones I think I paced a little bit better. So in this two minute one we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna pull up the references uh, I'm doing them in a different order just just because. Uh, and, yeah, and we'll see how they go.
I hope those two minute ones went well for you. Some, some of them I finished like a little early and I was like I don't really have time to start something else so I just kind of stopped but overall I was happy with how they turned out but let me know what you think um, if which one which version you liked better. For me, just starting with the 30 second to kind of figure out proportions of the animal really helps them to do the two minutes so I have some of the base planning figured out. It's kind of nice to get the clean slate after you tried the first 30 seconds, which is what I personally find. That's why I like doing these two different time lengths so that way I can just get a one really rough, not really worry about too much, just figure out my really base problems and then kind of start over and then have those lessons still in my head from the 30 second one and then just start off with a little bit of a head start on the two minute one. But so now it's kind of fun though, like to go back and like compare the 30 seconds to the two minutes. You can see how much detail that you're able to pick out and then also looking at your first 30 second one to your last 30 second one. For me, I see quite a bit of differences. Like I say, especially like the first one, I just kind of ran out of time. And then as we were going, I was getting the eye placements better, focusing on the ears a little bit more and I think just overall just becoming more confident, I guess in general, I notice some of my lines are just a little bit better and like less messy and then also trying to like capture some of the shagginess of them whereas the first ones were just more just straight lines. Um, and then in the two minute one as well, I think I saw similar improvements. Yeah, so I hope you guys thought this was as fun as I was. Let me know um, below in the comments like if you thought this was useful or not. I, I think it's just a, such a useful exercise because it's otherwise you get such bogged down and like getting like, perfect sometimes you forget to let yourself learn. This is this is the perfect space just to let yourself improve, make mistakes, and actually build off of them rather than like seeing them as a failure, you know, like sometimes it's like, oh, I made a mistake, now this piece is ruined. Here, and like in these gesture drawings, that's like the point. You're, you're pushing yourself so fast, so you don't really have time to think. You're just drawing what you see, and you're and just improving the, the link between what your, your hands are doing, what you're seeing, proportions, and just capturing, like say, like the essence of the animal. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope to see you guys again. Like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and comment below what your experience was, because I'm super interested to hear what you guys thought of this, this exercise as well and if you found it as useful as I do. Otherwise have a great rest of your day.